Dad was born March 20, 1930 in Logan, Utah, the first child of Fred Sr. and Grace Baugh. He grew up with one brother, Richard, and two sisters, Cheryl and Mary Alice, and an exceptionally large and loving extended family. Dad was raised in a small house that was purchased from his grandpa, Howell. As the family grew, and as Dad's grandparents came to live with the family, additions were made to the one bedroom, one bath house to increase living space, add bedrooms, and increase the size of the cellar. Richard and Dad began sleeping in the cellar or out on the back lawn where they used a canvas tarp for a tent. Dad always enjoyed sleeping out in a tent and listening to the sounds of a good storm. Dad was diagnosed with polio at the age of three the accepted medical practice at the time was to immobilize the muscles of the body that had been affected by the polio. So dad was put into a cast that went from his toes to his waist. During the time he was in a cast, his mother read him Bible stories to keep him entertained. From that, dad gained a lifelong appreciation and love for the stories of the Old Testament. A year later, Grandma and Dad spent two months in Los Angeles, where Dad was evaluated and treated at the Children's Orthopedic Hospital. They were advised to get lots of exercise and sunlight, so they spent a lot of time at the beach. Dad and Grandma returned to California again a year later. Grandpa told Dad that if he could swim across the enclosed area of Rainbow Pier by the time he was to come home, that he would give him a dollar. When Grandpa went to California to pick them up, Dad was able to make the swim and get his dollar. Being 1935 and during the Depression, a dollar was a lot of money for a five-year-old kid. Between ages five and 12, Dad had five surgeries to transplant muscles to strengthen his weakened leg and to perform bone grafts to strengthen his ankle. Each surgery was followed by months of recovery Dad said during this time he was always either in a cast, wearing a brace, or learning to walk again. With his first solo trip at age six, several times Dad traveled alone by train to and from California for checkups and surgeries where he was met by and stayed with relatives. Dad attended first grade in California at age four, then went to kindergarten with his age group in Logan and continued through elementary, junior high, and high school graduating in 1948. Dad had grown up helping with the books in the family plumbing business. He was a quick study in his junior high accounting classes and his teacher had recommended that he become a CPA. He decided then that was what he wanted to do. After high school, he enrolled at the Utah Agricultural College, now Utah State University, to begin his studies. Dad met Doris Halverson in a biology class during their first quarter of college. Dad was sitting on the front row and saw her come through the door. The guy sitting next to Dad noticed him looking at her and said, that girl looks a lot like my wife, to which Dad replied, that's the girl I'm going to marry. And indeed she was, and indeed he did. But not before serving a church mission, Mom said that his first proposal happened on the beach at Bear Lake and when something like, I can't get married until after I serve a mission. Soon after his mission, they were engaged and planning their wedding. Shortly before the wedding date, Dad was driving home to Logan from a visit with Mom in Spanish Fork. It was snowing and as Dad came around a curve, he slid into the car in front of him. As Dad and the other driver were trying to unbend the fender of the car so they could get moving again, another car came around the bend and slid into the pileup, pinning Dad's leg between the two bumpers. This caused a compound fracture of the tibia and a crushed ankle of the same leg that had been affected by polio. He was back in a cast from toe to hip again. The wedding was delayed nine days to allow for some recovery time. Mom and Dad were married in the Logan Temple on April 11, 1952. Grandpa Ba carried a stool in the temple so Dad could elevate his leg. For their honeymoon, they drove to Bear Lake and back. Mom drove and Dad sat in the back seat with his leg propped up. 
Mom has been and is still the love of Dad's life ever since he first saw her come through the door of that biology class. Mom and Dad have seven children, 35 grandchildren, and 82 great-grandchildren. After graduating from college in 1954, Dad went to work for the U.S. General Accounting Office and moved his family to Seattle, Washington, where he worked as a government auditor. One of his early assignments required him to be in Alaska for an extended period, which required him to leave his wife and two young children in Seattle. He referred to the time in Alaska as the longest time in his life. Eventually, Dad went to work for a public accounting firm in Seattle and earned his CPA license. Wanting to do something for vacation other than go home to Utah, Mom and Dad made the decision to move back to Logan in 1958, where Dad planned to set up his own practice. Instead, he ended up opening a Brigham City office as a new partner in a Logan-based accounting firm. He practiced in Brigham City until his retirement in 1992. Over the years, Dad had many business partners with offices in Brigham City, Ogden, Layton, Salt Lake, and St. George, with over 100 employees and clients in Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, California, and Washington. As partners joined and left the partnership, the firm name grew and changed. The name itself and the frequent changing of the name became cumbersome, so at one point all the partners' names were put in a hat. One name was pulled out, and the firm name has been Wiggins & Company ever since. Dad was actively involved in his professional associations and at various times served as president of the Northern Chapter of the Utah Association of CPAs, vice president of the Utah Association of CPAs, and as a member of the Governing Council of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Dad was also active in the community. He was a member of the Seattle Chamber of Commerce Aviation Committee and treasurer of the Seattle JCs. At various times, he served as president of the Brigham City Planning Commission, Brigham City Board of Adjustment, Box Elder Chamber of Commerce, and as chairman of the Box Elder County Housing Board. He has served as president of the Kiwanis and Rotary Clubs, and he served on the Brigham City Airport Board for over 40 years. In spite of his successes and contributions, Dad was happy to acknowledge that the long-term influence for good that mom will have on the world as a mother and grandmother will greatly outweigh and outlast any and all of his professional and community accomplishments. Dad was an avid flyer. He became interested in flying as a young child, playing with a toy airplane while recovering from his polio treatments. Having worked ahead in his junior high and high school classes, his teachers allowed him to skip school to take flying lessons, this without his parents' knowledge. He earned his pilot's license during his junior year of high school. He had ownership in an airplane from the time he was in college through most of his adult life. Dad used his airplanes for both business and pleasure. During college, when he was courting mom, he didn't have a car, but he had an airplane. Mom lived with her parents in Spanish Fort during summer break. In the summer of 1949, Dad flew to Spanish Fort 19 times to date Mom. As Dad said, he was hooked. Flying continued to be a basic form of transportation for Mom and Dad after they were married and as the family grew. Some of us kids have fond memories of flying to Spanish Fort where we would circle over our grandparents' house until Grandma would come out waving a dish towel so we could see her and know that she had seen us. We would then land at the airport and Grandma and Grandpa would pick us up. For business, Dad used his plane to visit clients throughout the western United States, including, for a time, weekly trips to St. George.
for pleasure dad enjoyed flying into the backcountry airstrips, at times flying into Cub River to fish, Smiley Creek for breakfast, Johnson Creek to camp, and other places he could find a way to justify flying. He especially enjoyed his many flying trips to the northern territories of Canada and Alaska. Dad was recently awarded the Wright Brothers Master Pilot Award after more than 50 years of flying. Even during his final year of life, he had a favored toy airplane that was given to him by his hospice nurse. Dad made sure the aides at Maple Springs knew that it was his and they better leave it alone. For many years, Dad also enjoyed riding motorcycles. At one point, he had a sign in the carport that said, Don't touch my wife, my airplane, or my motorcycle. In small print, it said, And I'm not sure about the order. But the order was clear. Mom, family, friends, and the gospel of Jesus Christ were more important than things. Dad liked to spend time with his family, friends, and neighbors. He organized flying trips, boating trips, cruises, and neighborhood campouts and breakfasts, creating wonderful, long-lasting memories. On family vacations, we knew that church was still important because we held sacrament meetings at places like Lake Powell, Fremont Lake, Snake River, and other favorite vacation spots. Dad was active in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He has a firm testimony of Jesus Christ and that God is a loving Father. He served a mission to the Central States Mission from 1950 to 1952. He spent most of his mission working with the chaplains and military families at Fort Sill and with Comanche Indians in Oklahoma. Dad served faithfully in many church positions, including serving in bishoprics and state presidencies as a clerk or counselor, as well as other callings. Dad wanted his kids to know that whatever we thought of him or whatever actions or decisions he may have made during his life, he always had and relied on a strong testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we, like Nephi, were born of goodly parents, we each also have a testimony of Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice. We know where Dad is, and that he is having a joyous reunion with loved ones there. We know that we have the opportunity to be with him again and share our testimony with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>